Hi and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apologize because this video is kind of all over the place. I had colored a bunch of really cute images when I was on the go the other day. And when I came home, I needed to turn them into cards very quickly. So I decided to use stencils to do some very quick stencil techniques. Now I've done many videos on stencils and I'll link to them here. Some are really creative techniques this video, this is a bunch of basic quick techniques for using stencils, but I have six to share with you today. So I thought I'd put them in a video. Now the stencils I'm using today are from My Favorite Things. On the left we have the Cloud Stencil and on the right is the Radiating Rays Stencil. Now the one on the left is a little bit different. It can be used to make clouds or waves, whatever you want, and you just use the outside edge. Now if you don't have a stencil like this, you could always use a border die and cut it from a piece of acetate or cardstock and use that edge to create the same effect. So a border die such as this one. But today I'm gonna to use the cloud stencil and the radiating ray stencil. But remember, the things that we do, you can do with any stencil you may have. Now the first idea is very simple, and that is layering your inking with stencils. So if you see this background here, it was very quick to make thanks to a bit of masking and stencils. So I thought I would show you that first. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white piece of cardstock here, and I put two post-it notes to mask off an area about an inch off the bottom. I'm using my ink blending tool and Mode Lawn Distress Ink to very, very lightly apply ink onto the edge there of those post-it notes. I'm not trying to fill the whole area, just put a light coverage. And I start on my post-it notes and work my way off in a very light and circular motion. And that's how I get that soft coloring without the harsh lines. Now I'm putting post-it notes again down, but this time in the opposite direction so that I can mask off the area to do the sky. Notice I again am starting off of my project and slowly working my way on with very light-handed circular motion. This time I'm using Salty Ocean Distress Ink, but you might see that I grabbed the wrong handle to do this. But this is in fact Salty Ocean uh, Distress Ink. Now I'm using the edge of my cloud stencil to create the look of clouds and it's amazing how realistic this looks. I'm kind of keeping the sides open and I'm going to end up trimming this down, but check out. You can just flip this stencil around any direction and you can end up with eight different cloud options, four on each side of the stencil. So I'm going for a very soft look here. You can even do partial clouds if you want to and you can go back and add more color if you need to. Okay, so once I have my clouds done, I'm gonna come in with the Radiating Rays stencil and apply some fossilized amber distress ink over it. Now you would normally think that the, the color wouldn't be good to layer on top of the blue clouds we already have, but it works. I could have done some crazy masking techniques, but it would have been a huge waste of time. So I really am just layering inking from two different stencils on top of each other. So don't be afraid to layer up inking. You can get some really great results. You could even do two different patterns on top of each other. Now I'm going to focus this video just on the stenciling, but I do want to show you how I turn these into cards. So this is the Giraffing Me Crazy stamp set from My Favorite Things. I went ahead and colored the images with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. I added a sentiment on the bottom and put this on a craft note card. And then I added some Simon's Stamp little enamel dot eyes. I thought that was a perfect little touch. And there you can see how that sun layers over the cloud background beautifully. So don't be afraid to layer up your stencils and get that inking kind of piled on top of each other. It can create a lot of wonderful dimension. Okay, so the next idea is to do offset ink layering. Basically, you ink it once in one color and then slightly offset the stencil and ink in another color. And that's what I did for the waves that you see on this card. It really gives a faux dimensional look. This is very simple to do. This time I'm using my cloud stencil to create waves. So I'm first applying Peacock Feathers Distress Ink, not very heavily, just a pretty light coverage. And then I'm going to slightly offset the stencil, keeping it lined up but offset, so that I can then ink with a Salty Ocean Distress Ink. So I'm using a teal and a blue cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this as I go down covering the card. But basically I ink with one color, then I slightly move it and ink with another color. And it really gives some great faux dimension. This offset inking technique works great with any kind of pattern stencil too. I just really liked it with the waves today. 
Now you can also do any of these stencil techniques with any inks you may have or any inking tool you may have. I just decided to go with Distress Inks and my ink blending tool. I'm also adding a little sunshine on the top here. And then to decorate this piece, which by the way, I trimmed down a bit, I'm using my My Favorite Things Mermazing stamp set. This has the cutest little fish and mermaids in it. So I stamped, die cut, and colored a little mermaid and turtle and added that with foam dots. And then I stamped a sentiment below. Now those little bubbles that you see, those are perfectly round drops that I created with my Tonic Nouveau drops. I use the clear for it, but it picks up the blue distress ink underneath. It looks beautiful in real life. I also used some images from that same stamp set to decorate a matching envelope. I just stamped it with a blue ink on a blue envelope. So there you have the technique of offset inking with a stencil. And by the way, I colored these with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and a Wink of Stella Shimmer pen, but I really wanted to keep the focus on the stencil techniques today. Okay, so my third idea for using stencils very quickly on cards is to use it with white ink on colored cardstock. I think we often forget that you can use white ink with stencils on a dark colored cardstock to get a really beautiful look. It almost looks like the paper is glowing. So here I'm using the cloud stencil again, and I have an ink blending tool that's clean that I'm using Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. Now notice most of the ink is on my stencil, and then I'm kind of pulling it off onto the paper. So I just kind of get this what looks like a glow over the clouds. So I'm not really blending this out, just kind of pulling the ink off. So I'm going to repeat this to cover up the whole front of this small card. This is three and a half by five. And I created this palm tree with the My Favorite Things Beach Builders die set. Has a lot of elements for a beach, but I'm just using the tree. I'm adding shading with some Distress Ink. And for the trunk itself, I'm just pressing with the side of my dark walnut stain Distress Ink ink blending tool. And it creates lines on the trunk of the tree that look realistic. I'm also using Copic markers to kind of add some shading to the palm uh, tree branches also. Now for the sentiment, I decided to stamp You Are My Happy pa Place from this My Favorite Things More Essential Sentiment set. I'm stamping it with Versamark ink and then adding some white embossing powder. I was sure to make sure that white pigment ink was dry in the back before I did that. I also added a few hearts and then I realized when looking at this die set that there were additional little palm tree pieces that I could put on the top and coconut. So I added those on top and there we have the final card with the white ink on that bright blue cardstock. Okay, so the quick stencil technique idea number four is to trace a pattern. This is probably the easiest of all of them and great for simple cards. I told you I was going very simple today. Now this one, I just used the cloud stencil to create waves once again. I have a small white note card here that's three and a half by five, and I'm using a glitter pen to trace the stencil. I'm actually tracing it once, shifting it slightly, and then tracing it again and coloring in between those lines. That just gives me a thicker glitter wave pattern. I could just trace it with a thin line, but I wanted it to be a little more bold. So I'm gonna repeat this to cover the entire card. Now you could trace any pattern from any stencil with any type of marker. I just decided to go with a silver shimmer today. I then stamped and die cut these adorable little fish from this stamp set from My Favorite Things. This is such a unique set with flowers and everything. I just went with the three simple fish and stamped the sentiment, see you soon. This time I'm using the Tonic Nouveau Drops in the clear blue, this is the jewel drop and it has a little blue touch to it, and those will dry perfectly round and look like bubbles coming up from the fish. So there we have a very simple technique of tracing a stencil. Think of all those stencils that you have, all the different patterns. You could trace them with different colors, maybe glitter pens or gel pens, and get a different look every time. The fifth fast way to use your stencils is with shimmer mists. Now you could use colored mists, but I get real messy with them, so I decided to just stick with a basic clear shimmer mist for this card. So I have my blue cardstock piece once again, and I have some Sukuneko Shimmer Spritz. This is my favorite shimmer spritz. You wanna make sure you shake it up like crazy before you use it to make sure you get lots of that shine. So I have some Salty Ocean Distress Ink. I'm just pulling some color down from the edge of the stencil. Not much color, I'm not coloring the entire bottom. 
And then I'm gonna leave the stencil there and spray this about six times from about two feet above with my shimmer spritz. And then when I heat set that, I have a shimmery ocean that really is tone on tone. I then am going to stamp some of the elements from the stamp set with blue ink, and then I added a mermaid and little fish, along with a white heat emboss sentiment. Those little drops, again, are Nouveau drops, the clear kind, and they dry perfectly round and clear. And there you can see the shimmer that we get in the ocean. So try using Shimmer Mist for a tone-on-tone -tone shine with any stencil that you have. I tell you, I can't get enough of these cute little mermaids. Okay, now the last idea is to use heat embossing with your stencils. There are many ways you can do this. I'm going to stick with something simple, and that's to use my Distress Inks with heat embossing. So I have the radiating rays dot, or stencil that I've been using throughout this video. I'm going to place it so that the center of it is towards the top of a white cardstock panel. And then I'm using my fossilized amber distress ink and ink blending tool just to apply some ink kind of radiating out from the center. I'm not covering the entire area, but it, rather applying the ink heavier towards the center and lighter on the edges. Now the nice thing about Distress Ink is that you can actually heat emboss with it if you bring the embossing powder to it very quickly. For some shine, I used a sparkle embossing powder and you can see how beautifully that heat embossed. So you could put any kind of Distress Ink or pigment ink or verse mark over a stencil and then add embossing powder for a really neat pattern. Okay, so now I wanted to die cut a little window to have some clouds behind this radiating sun. This is a new die from My Favorite Things that cuts a square with faux stitching around it, double faux stitching. I have the rectangle of this and I really liked it, so I'm so happy there is now a square. Now I just used my cloud stencil and some Salty Ocean Distress Ink to create kind of a little cloud background to go behind that little window. Nothing fancy, just wanted some clouds back there. I then stamped, colored, and die cut uh, some koalas and a tree from this Cuddly Koalas My Favorite Things stamp set. Now I added the trees kind of peeking out from the window and added the bear on the front and also a sentiment right below it. And I trimmed the panel down and put it on a craft note card. Now those eyes, I made them dark and black by using black Nouveau Tonic Drops. They're perfect cre for creating nice dimensional eyes that are solid black. So there you have the sixth way of using a stencil for a quick background. Just use it with embossing powder. So there you go, six very fast ways to use stencils. I'm sorry to rush through it. I just wanted to share the ideas with you in case you, like me, like to color on the go and then come back and create quick cards. The supplies are linked below in my YouTube description, but go to my blog for more photos of these cards and some other ideas. I appreciate you stopping by. In the middle are two more videos that might be of interest to you, including coloring with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens like I did today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.